What has happened with Argentina's economy? What happened in the past that has led it to be in the position it's in today? Where is it currently? And what might the future hold for this great country? Might Bitcoin be the solution to its problems? That is what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's jump straight in. As you can see from the graph here, the currency in Argentina, the Argentine peso, is down over 98% compared with the US dollar over the past decade. And the inflation rate in Argentina was 113.4% in July of 2023. And to try and fight this huge inflation, the Central Bank of Argentina increased interest rates by 21% to a whopping 118% in August. Interest rates on a mortgage in Argentina are now at a record 82.2%, which is huge. So if you are in Argentina, the cost of things you need to buy are going up by a ridiculous amount and you can't borrow because the interest payments would be huge. So the economy is surely in real trouble. Is there a solution or a way out for Argentina? I'm not sure. There are talks about Argentina possibly joining BRICS, which is an economic bloc consisting currently of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Bitcoin also officially reaches an all time high in Argentina passing 10 million pesos. So adoption is growing in a big way. Not a huge surprise, given the state of the economy. There's even talk that Argentina may go even further by adopting it as legal tender like El Salvador did. Because some research from ARK Invest on the 29th of August stated that Bitcoin adoption in Argentina is outpacing El Salvador. And you can see the headline here, which is incredible given that it's legal tender there. Also, a Bitcoin advocate, Javier Millet, just won a primary election in Argentina. He also talks about abolishing the country's central bank, by the way. But how did Argentina get to where it is today? The name Argentina actually comes from the Latin, Argentum, which means silver. And the river by the capital Buenos Aires, Rio de la Plata, literally means river of silver. Argentina, through its very names then, used to be prosperous, but not only its names. In 1913, Argentina was one of the 10 richest countries in the world. Between 1870 and 1913, Argentina's economy had grown faster than those of both the United States and Germany. However, after the Second World War, Argentina stagnated and was overtaken by many other countries, including its neighbor, Chile. For example, its per capita GDP was the same in 1988 as it was in 1959, which is 29 years later. So it hadn't grown. It was 72% of the US level in 1913. This sunk to 34% by 1998. Inflation was often in double digits in this time and actually treble or quadruple digits between 1975 and 1990, with its highest being 5,000% in 1989. Argentina also defaulted on its payments to foreign creditors in 1982, 1989, 2002 and 2004. If you look at the photo, you'll see it apparently defaulted again in 2014. Many authors and historians have suggested possible reasons for this collapse of Argentina over time. And let's go through some of them now. So a few elite landowners tried to base the whole economy on agricultural exports to the English speaking world which failed comprehensively during the depression. Large scale immigration without freeing up land for them to live on created a large urban working class. There was repeated military involvement in politics with various unfulfilled promises. For example, in 1930, they offered something for everyone, wages, conditions, tariff. In 1955, currency devaluation was the aim to improve the balance between agriculture and industry. In 1966, it was all about technological modernization. 1973, there was a huge surge of inflation that led to a lot of violence in Argentina. And the list continues, unfortunately. In 1983 to 1985, Argentina attempted Keynesian demand management and rescheduling. Then in 1985 to 1989, Argentina tried currency reform along with wage and price controls. Public expenditure continued to exceed tax revenue during these times. In 1989, there were power cuts for up to five hours 
as the grid couldn't cope with demand. Banks were shut to prevent the currency's exchange rate from collapsing completely. The Austral, which was the currency at the time, fell 64% against the dollar. The World Bank froze lending to Argentina due to its huge deficit. Bond prices plunged as investors weren't buying due to the high inflation. And there were fears that the central bank's reserves were just running out. In April of 1989, Argentina physically ran out of money. The mint ran out of paper and couldn't buy any more. There was a lot of rioting and looting as a result. And that is a list of actually 17 things. And ultimately, they point to there being no cohesion as a country to grow the economy over the long term and ensure price stability for Argentina. No leadership group was able to lead and take those needed down its path to success. Argentina's external debt went from 46 billion in 1983 to 65 billion in 1989 and then 155 billion over the next decade. A new peso was introduced in 1991, which was the sixth Argentine currency in the space of a century that was pegged to the dollar. However, the fiscal policy didn't improve despite inflation actually dropping and the government didn't balance its budget, tapping into the international bond market instead. Public debt then rose from 35% of GDP in 1994 to 64% in 2001. There were two bailouts by the IMF, $23 billion in total in 2001, to stop Argentina defaulting on its debts in a year where capital GDP dropped by 12%. Then in December of that year, the IMF offered it a final lifeline. The Argentinian government announced the cancellation of all of its foreign debt, including bonds worth $81 billion. In nominal terms, this was the biggest debt default in history. And unfortunately, things don't seem to have improved since. In 2018, the IMF approved its biggest ever loan of $57 billion to Argentina. Then in March 2022, the IMF agreed a $45 billion deal with Argentina. And finally, Argentina is where it is today. And we looked at some of the metrics at the beginning of this video, but I'd love to know what you think. Can Argentina turn things around? Will it join BRICS? Or will it adopt Bitcoin as legal tender? Or will, at the very least, Bitcoin adoption continue to grow? And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help. And have a great day.